Lawa is back with this, their latest ultra-wide full-frame 15mm f2 for your Leica M, your APS-C cameras, and your Michael Four Thirds. Yes, this may be one of the most versatile lenses that you can use in all these formats. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Hi, it's Jimmy Cheng here from Red35. It has been a few months since I was mightily shocked by Lawa 6mm f2 lens for Michael Four Thirds. I even crowned it to be the lens of the year earlier this year. If you missed that video, the link is right up here. So, the latest 15mm f2 is one of the widest full frame lenses in their catalog. And because of its wideness, you can indeed adapt to the crop formats so it becomes a relatively useful 22.5mm in 1.5x APS-C format and a very street happy 30mm in Michael Four Thirds. And also with a f2 aperture means that you should be pretty good in low light too. Sounds like a Swiss army knife lens for photographers who have multiple cameras in multiple formats. Of course, you will need adapters, but if you can get past that, you can have one lens and use in all three formats. Pretty sweet if you ask me. But anyway, this review is conducted using primarily my new Nikon ZFC with my new TechChart AF adapter. Yes, you heard that right. The new TechChart adapter turns any Leica M mount lenses into autofocus beasts on any Nikon Z cameras. But this is a review on the lens itself, so if you want to see my review on that quirky adapter, remember to subscribe and stay tuned. Lawa lenses are always good, great in fact, and I have no problem with any of the lenses that they loan me or ones I bought myself, and I can tell you that I have a fair few. <laughs> but this new 15mm is no exception. Solid full metal barrel and everything just feels premium and tightly put together. Focus ring is silky smooth like hot knife slicing butter, and the clicky aperture feels just precise with just enough friction. When mounted on my Leica M, there's no signs of play anywhere, and the fit is just perfect. And in terms of build, you really can't fault any lower lenses these days. However, the lens itself isn't light, but this is to be expected for a full-frame metal lens. So while it feels okay if you adapt this lens on a full-frame mirrorless camera, you will feel front-heavy even on my Leica M. In fact, practically any compact size camera. And for best balance, you will need a larger camera body with grip. Therefore, while the focus mechanism is internal, which means that the balance is, you know, remains the same, doesn't really change, you will always feel front heavy, regardless. This is interesting. I've tested and reviewed many Michael Forthard lenses from Lauer, and I'm really used to how they look and behave with my cameras. So this new full frame 15 millimeters came with a, a bit of a shock to me. But before I explain, have a look at my sample images that I shot in London the other day with my ZFC, of course. So you have some ideas when I talk about image quality later. I've been contemplating all my time. Thoughts make me tired, just running through my mind. Wonder if there's peace to I can find. Instead of always being on the ground. I need a new purpose. I'm looking for so much more. Don't leave me here searching. You're just what I'm longing for. When times are getting crazy. Everything seems hazy Is there some place for safety? Oh, 
what do you think? Anyway, here's my brick wall test and let's see what we can study with Lauer's new 15mm F2. Central sharpness is pretty decent at F2, but with a little bit of a halo going and expect the effect to be stronger when you are shooting in bright daylight like today, this decreases the micro contrast and may perceive to be a little soft, but it isn't. Stopping down even to f2.8 dramatically reduces the effect and make everything look crispier, sharper and more details. Peak performance is at f4 before diffraction start to show at f11. Edge performance is a bit worse than the central area. At f2, smearing and coma is pretty heavy and it doesn't really improve until f8. And peak performance is at f11 before getting soft again due to diffraction at f16. So as far as sharpness goes, I think you will get the most by placing your subject in the central region for optimal performance, as edges are pretty soft, even on my cropped ZFC. So expect a little worse on a full frame body. But if you're adapting this to your Micro Four Thirds, it will be pretty much decent, as most of the flaws of this lens will be cropped away. Vignette does present between f2 and 2.8, but disappears by f4. Chromatic aberration is pretty well controlled, with only some fringing shown in the highest contrast scenarios. So overall, you shouldn't worry about it too much. Lauer has been pretty consistent with their latest lens design when it comes to bokeh and rendering of the lenses. It's a blend between modern and vintage look in most cases. It is really down to individual preferences, but as I like my photos to look more natural, I do prefer a slightly old school look from the lens. And this is one of the reasons why I love Olympus Feather Bokeh. No. Lauer's bokeh isn't like Olympus, <laughs> but it certainly has a look from the late 80s and the early 90s, and I like it. How about you? Being an other Lauer 0D lens means that the straight lines remain straight, and that's without any digital correction. Lauer's gone to a great length to ensure all their 0D lenses are optically corrected for distortion, and it shows here. As more and more manufacturers go for the digital corrections for their lenses, I'm glad to see Lauer uses a more traditional, and more difficult route to make their lenses. Bravo! Flare is something you have to factor in as part of the aesthetic of this lens. As a full frame ultra wide, together with this very, very shallow hood, you almost guarantee to see flare in the image, no matter how good the lens coating is. Well, this is a Leica m lens, so it's not the friendliest lens around for video. And the Kiki aperture, for instance, the slower focusing holocore for rangefinder camera, all contribute to the fact that this may not be the lens for video work. Together with its rather heavy weight, it is not great on gimbal either. So, despite being a lens, I would not recommend this lens for video work. So, there you go. What do I think of Lauer's latest full frame ultra wide prime, the 15mm F20D? Well, I feel a little confused. I love Lauer lenses, and they represent performance and value. They further cemented their status in my book after they won last year's Lens of the Year award with their utterly brilliant 6mm f2. But this 15mm f2 is just a bit different. In some cases, it's a great lens, but if you are using it primarily on a full frame camera or on a Leica M, then you need to know that while the central sharpness and the lack of distortion are excellent, the edge performance isn't the greatest in this class. On the crop format, it performs better on APS-C and great on Michael Four Thirds. Yet, I said that this lens could potentially be that lens that you can use on full frame and other crop formats, be the ultimate versatile lens that I thought it could be. But unfortunately, it wasn't. While it can be a great lens to be adapted on APS-C, I wouldn't use it on Micro Four Thirds, because Lauer's own 17mm Prime is much smaller and cheaper, and lighter, so a much better fit on Micro Four Thirds bodies. Then you can also get slightly smaller ultra wide lens on APC formats in their own catalog too. Well then, as a full frame lens, while it may be one of the widest and also one of the lower cost ultra wide Prime lens on the market, I just think that you may want to investigate a little bit more unless you want an affordable ultra-wide M lens, or you just simply love Lauer, period. <laughs> so, what's my verdict? Should you avoid it, consider it, shortlist it, 
or just go ahead and buy it. Well, I think you should consider it. Don't avoid it though, it is a good lens, just not a great lens in my opinion. I think it shoots the budget and and just did I just don't think it deliver when it comes to edge performance. And this is something that many photographers will focus on when it comes to ultra wide lenses. And that's it folks, what do you think about this lens? Let's have a chat in the comment section below. And thanks again for watching. And you know what to do now, thumb if you like this video and sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography, filmmaking, and of course, camera and lenses. Peace. Welcome to my bonus sections and yes, it is pretty warm here in London. Summer days finally has arrived. But anyway, I have mixed feeling about Lauer's latest 15mm f2 after, you know, all the brilliant Michael Forthert versions of lenses that I love and adore and, you know, I even crowned one of them last year, like I already mentioned. I just think their lenses are really great. But their latest M-mount full film lens is a little bit, I think, I don't know. Maybe I just have really high expectation after I review all the Michael Forthert lenses. I just think that it's lacking a little bit, especially in the edges performance. It's okay depending on your shooting style, but if you're looking for ultra wide lens, that you probably want edge to edge sharpness. Uh, you know, for your landscape work, for, you know, for interior shots, for instance, or anything like that. Um, uh, so this is kind of my own opinion, really, and uh, it ultimately really depends on what sort of thing you, sh you, you do or you shoot anyway. And, uh, but for video work, yeah, I don't think this will be suitable and uh, simply because uh, it's a little bit heavy if you mount it on the camera, depending on what sort of camera you're using, because of M mount lens, if you want to adapt to a Sony or any other full frame mirrorless camera, you do need an adapter makes it, makes it even bigger and longer. So uh, you just have to think about that. Uh, you may want to get the normal versions that is not M mount and uh, I, I haven't checked Lauer's catalog, where they do offer this one in other mounts. If it's only M mount, then, well, you probably wouldn't want to use it over video. But if they do have a normal mirrorless version, yeah, that you may want to consider using on the mirrorless bodies. Uh, so that may be feasible if you want an ultra wide filming uh, on a gimbal and things like that. Uh, but other than that, you know, and uh, I would say it's a good lens for the price. Just really isn't a great lens. Uh, it's unique, obviously, because it's Definitely one of the widest ones on the market right now for the price. And uh, you don't find many things similar to this at the moment. So it is a unique offering. So once again, I have mixed feeling about this and uh, you just have to weigh the pluses and minuses and just see whether it's worth your money to invest into this lens. But anyway, I hope Lawa will produce other good lenses. I've already seen their catalogs that they, they are releasing some really amazing lenses. So I'm hoping to bring more uh, uh, other reviews to you guys to see and uh, because some of them are quite interesting. And I will see if I can get hold of them and also to see if there are other high performance lenses in Michael Forth in, uh, in the coming months. And I'm sure that you will miss them because of course, we are heavy on Michael Forth. And uh, now I have the APS-C as well. So uh, yeah, slowly expanding, slowly expanding, surely, but slowly. <laughs> Anyway, hope you guys enjoy yourself and uh, also enjoy the brilliant sun, sunny days if you're in London. If not, hopefully you have a good day too. Remember, go outside and keep shooting. Until next time, I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.